Okay, I'm recording now. All right, so, um, yeah, so um, someone asked this lovely question on labeling stuff, like uh, reading stuff or understanding stuff about narcissism or this and that and whatever, and is that useful, all that labeling? And doesn't it, can it not make um, things even worse? Isn't it just better to focus on love and peace? Well, for myself, um, this thing of absolute each, I mean, there's different levels of consciousness and every book, every person you meet has a level of consciousness. And depending on what level, like some people are vibrating, shall we say, uh, at fear, at some are at pride, uh, some are uh, at neutrality, some are at acceptance, some are at love, some are at unconditional love, uh, some are at the, uh, in enlightenment. So whenever you read a book or you listen to somebody, um, their, their whole languaging and their whole reference of the, of the world and the way in which they see solutions and problems in the world is different at different levels of consciousness. If you're vibrating at fear, it's like you're on radio fear and you're thinking about narcissism and labeling will be uh, often tinged with that radio station of fear and will be pulling in thoughts from the collective fear around, uh, around anything that's interpreted in the world, whether it be narcissism and labeling or whatever. And if you're giving advice to someone and you're vibrating at the level of fear, that will also, those words and those labels and those frameworks when you're trying to be helpful to others, if you're vibrating at fear, will also be imbued with the vibration you're at. Now, the same would be if you're at pride, pride like I know everything, I know more than everyone else. Uh, if you're at neutrality, you know, like uh, narcissism and labeling, it's, it's interesting, but uh, it's not really that important, or um, it's, I feel quite neutral around the whole thing. Or if you're in the fields of acceptance or love or unconditional love, um, the the prism by which you you're uh, interpreting the world and the literature and labels and thoughts are different. As you go to higher levels of consciousness, any even if someone's talking at the level of fear or is, there's a book written from a low level of consciousness, you're still going to um, be picked up through the levels of love, and you're going to uh, you're going to sort of register it from those higher fields. Now, of course, when you're in the lower fields, i.e. you're in the vibration of fear and you're reading a book on narcissism with lots of labeling, um, the lower vibrational levels tend to hook into words or tend to be attracted to spiritual pathways or spiritual books. Or even if they're exposed to higher vibration things, you know, they tend to, the, uh, the vibration tends to um, have an effect on what they can absorb or not absorb and what they interpret the message to be or not. So generally, um, now is it, if you're a spiritual seeker, should you just focus on peace and love and forgiveness and not worry about anything? Well, you know, like, I mean, I quite like the 12 steps. I quite like the Course in Miracles. I mean, just to focus on peace and love uh, and not letting go of the darkness within you, for me, would not be enough. Because uh, just from a point of view of being programmed and being the world being constantly programming one with messages and images and unconsciously one is picking up so many, so many ideas and thoughts which are, are programming the unconscious. So just focus on peace wouldn't necessarily remove everything from the unconscious, all the karma and the karmic baggage, the traumas. Um, so often uh, to release that deeper stuff, um, uh, you know, a, a spiritual approach is required. <clears throat> now different spiritual books, pathways, authors uh, are at different vibrations and so their effectiveness at releasing stuff is, uh, uh, you know, is different and different spiritual seekers will be attracted to different spiritual pathways for releasing stuff at different stages in their spiritual journey. Now, generally speaking, at certain levels of consciousness, labeling things is just used by the intellect just to, you know, rummage around things and is not useful. You know, so, you know, having a period of spiritual growth where you don't label things and just allow things to be and just experience things 
um, does have a benefit until you've uh, released that tendency uh, of consciousness to, to sort of label things and go into the intellect. Now to go from intellectualizing and understanding things and label things, which is um, not a very high level of consciousness, it's okay, but to get to the fields of love and transcending just um, the absorption or the addiction to thinking and labeling and understanding, to go into the fields of formless love, um, or the fields of spiritual love, and then you want to let go of that tendency to be addicted to your thinking processes. <clears throat> and always this thing of just trying to understand or label everything and just give the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the mind lots of stuff to be thinking about, because thinking isn't a very, very high level of consciousness. So when you're more on the levels of formless inspiration and love, uh, you've then transcended the addiction to just labeling and reading books just for the sake of it and just labeling things. But I think in spiritual practice, um, you know, praying and finding out what's the baggage and then praying for it to be removed or praying for forgiveness or releasing it is like, you know, uh, asking for divine intervention to release the darkness, which I do think is necessary and is there in most of the proper spiritual approaches. Like in 12 steps, we'd have a step for inventory, fear inventory, um, <clears throat> resentment inventory, sexual inventory, in Course in Miracles, uh, everything that comes up for you, you'll be forgiving it or asking for peace around it or whatever. Okay, so I will stop the recording.